Hey, Jared here from Sound Guitar Lessons. This is another weekly lesson video. I post a video every Tuesday, no matter what. This is actually number 98, 98 weeks in a row, posting a lesson here. This video is a very thorough, very useful guitar theory lesson on how to know when a chord tone is a chord extension or not, and what that means, and what are the rules, and how are we supposed to make sense of that stuff. This video is called Demystifying Compound Intervals Versus Chord Extensions. Kind of a technical title, but if you're into this stuff or interested in it, it's gonna be really good. It's actually a video straight from my new course that is launching this week called Chords on Command. Now, before you go, oh great, there it is. He has a course, he's trying to sell me stuff. I knew it, I knew this was coming. I'm super committed to the free lessons. Those are gonna keep coming no matter what. I'm never gonna stop doing that, but how do I make that vision, that goal sustainable for myself? Well, it's by creating a super premium, amazing learning experience that is everything you need to know on a certain topic that walks through step-by-step -step an end-to-end -end program for basically virtually guaranteeing that you master a certain subject with exercises and amazing presentation and downloads and everything. And that's exactly what I've done for this course, Chords on Command. Chords on Command is a complete program for getting a crazy level of music theory clarity on the fretboard by learning how to analyze or create from scratch any chord, any type of harmony on the guitar, anywhere on the fretboard. This kind of power and knowledge on the fretboard and knowing the instrument that well, of course, gives us more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. And that is really the ultimate goal. And the course is so much more than that too. There's a ton of good stuff in there. So the free lessons will never stop, but I do have more amazing paid stuff coming out in the future too. I have a course coming up next year about how to arrange chord melodies on the guitar. I have a course coming out that is on how to improvise over chord changes and just absolutely nail the progressions, nail the changes, use the chord tones, that kind of thing. And the courses are just, again, this full package of kind of guaranteeing a, a result, walking someone through beginning to end. How do you get this uh, from A to B? How do you get from not being able to do this thing to being able to do this thing or have this knowledge kind of all in a turnkey system? So I'm trying to live this life where I can give, 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 and just keep the lessons coming all the time. And I love all the comments. I love all of the enthusiasm that people are sharing with me about learning from all of my videos. And so to keep that going, I, I wanna you know, take it to the next level with a small percentage of people, make sure they're happy and they love a paid program uh, that's gonna walk them through an amazing learning experience. This is why every guitar teacher you follow online has a course or a paid program. I know that less than 1%, small percentage of people who follow my lessons are gonna sign up for my paid program. And those people, I'm gonna do my best to just blow them away with the quality of the course. It's my job to make sure that they love it and they're happy with it, and they do. Check out the testimonials. Just click on the link in the top of the description. You will you can see more about Chords on Command, and you can scroll down and check the testimonials of what people are saying who already bought the program. So if my course, Chords on Command, sounds like a right fit for you and you wanna sign up for it, awesome. If not, Totally fine, 100% cool. Either way, you get to watch one of the videos from that course right now. Now, since it's from the course, you're gonna hear me mention like some exercises that I had presented earlier in the course, or you know, this is coming up later in the course, that kind of thing. But I did choose a video from the whole program that stands really well on its own. So you should not feel like anything is left hanging or there's anything super confusing about it. It should give you some great information just totally on its own. It's a really great lesson. I think you are going to benefit from it if you are interested in music theory on the guitar. So here it is. Here's the lesson called Demystifying Compound Intervals Versus Chord Extensions from my course, Chords on Command. Welcome to Demystifying Compound Intervals Versus Chord Extensions. This is going to be just a quick lecture lesson with no exercises, just so we can understand some theory stuff that's important for our, our goals here. Demystifying compound intervals versus chord extensions because we talked about how they're similar already. So the lesson outcome here is when do we label chord tones as extensions and when do we not do that? So th like I said, there are no exercises for this lesson. Our main takeaway here that we want to understand the point of this lesson is that extensions are chord tones 
with labels above seven, but they can be anywhere. Okay, so a lot of times people think, oh, an extension like a 13. Oh, okay, that's a six, an octave up. That's the compound interval definition, but not the chord tone definition. So extensions, ex chord tones that are above seven, they don't have to be more than an octave away from the root like compound intervals do. So for example, this is a C major seven sharp 11 chord. Okay, we have one and don't worry, you're going to learn all about all the chord types and all the spelling. And um, so you don't need to understand why that is right now. You will later from this course. Uh, but this has a root, it has a third of a chord, it has a fifth of a chord, it has a seven of a chord, and it has a sharp 11. So it is a C major seven sharp 11 chord. Um, and there we see that I spelled those out for us, one, three, five, and the extension sharp 11. So that sharp 11 is not called sharp four, even though it's so close to the root. So if you use your mad skills that you have for counting with the major scale, you can go one to two, and then say cross over from two to three with the whole step, you've done all this. Three, you could say three to four is a half step, and then say, oh, okay, that's sharp four. It's a half step above four, sharp four. Um, but as a chord tone, it's called sharp 11. So similarly, regular chord tones can be more than an octave away from the root and their names stay the same, right? So this five up here and this three, um, that's just called five and that's just called three. Uh, you don't have to say this is a 10th, right? It's the third. Um, this note happens to be E. There's E way up here. That would also just be three, right? So the fact that it's, um, you know, there's a three right here as well. It's just three wherever it is. So as a chord tone, um, these one, you know, one through seven numbers are always just going to be what they are anywhere on the fretboard. And the extensions, the same thing. Anywhere else that this sharp 11 might exist is just called sharp 11. It doesn't have to be an octave away. That's the main takeaway here, that the extensions, they could be below the root and it's you'd still call it sharp 11. Um, so let's just do another example here. This chord is called C add nine and it is spelled one, three, five, and nine. Okay, so you can see that it has the root and here's the three and here's the five. There's the root again and there's nine. Okay, so it has one, three, five and the extension nine. Uh, the nine is not called two even though it's so close to the root. Right, it doesn't have to be an octave away. So the notes of a chord can be in any order and the spelling remains the same. So the spelling is this. We'll be studying a lot of chord spelling later, but uh, any order you put these in, it's still gonna be C add nine and they still are gonna be labeled the same, right? So the interval of a nine, um, just purely an interval, is, uh, would, would mean that it's an octave away. Uh, it's the two that's an octave up. As a chord tone, it's the chord tone nine. Okay, we're gonna get exposed to more of this stuff. Um, at first, I know it's confusing if this is the first time you've heard of this stuff, um, but we'll, we'll practice a ton. So if the three wasn't there, this is just a little bit of exposure into how chord spelling and, and structures work that we're gonna practice a bunch. If the three was not in the chord, um, only then would we interpret this nine as two, and that would turn it into a C sus two chord. Okay, so a C sus two chord is spelled one, two, five. Look at how that structure is the same. You have one, you have two here, you have five, you have, you have one. That structure is the same over here. It just has the three. So because the three is gone, that's why we call it two now. You don't have to memorize this example. It's just exposure to, to kind of soak in for now. You don't have to memorize, oh, what is a C sus two and why? What's that rule? Because we'll be, we'll be using all, all the exercises later to internalize this stuff, but just some exposure. Okay, sometimes two can be a chord tone, four can be a chord tone, six can be a chord tone. There are just rules for when is two actually called nine, and when is four actually called 11, and when is six actually called 13. So there's just kind of some spelling rules for that, and we're gonna learn all about it. So when are chord tones above or below seven? When there is a complete triad, one, three, five, or a complete seventh chord, one, three, five, seven, any other notes added act as extensions. So these are those rules that we're going over here. Let's clarify that. Let's kind of go over that again. When there is a complete triad, the complete triad is one, three, and five. 
or a complete seven chord, one, three, five, seven. Any other notes added act as extensions. What other notes are we talking about? Two, four, and six. Those are the other notes in the scale. Two, four, and six that are not in that chord. Um, if you add a two, four, or a six to this structure that it already has, one, three, five, and seven, that's when you would call it actually it's a nine or it's an 11 or it's a 13. Okay, so when any of those basic chord tones are missing though, the added notes replacing them uh, with numbers are below seven. So if any of these main notes are missing, one, three, five, one, three, five, seven. So if the three is missing, then two or four can be present in the chord and they don't have to be extensions. And if seven is missing, then six can be present, okay? We'll go over that more because it's just required to understand that, to understand chord spelling. I'm just setting you up for this. Um, so in the next module, we can uh, get the practice with it. So if the three is missing, then two is not nine, it's two. And four is not 11, it's four. If the three is there, then two is nine and four is 11, right? If the seven is missing, then six is actually just six. It's taking the place of, it's taking the role of seven. Um, and so onward with this, but if three is in the chord, uh, then the two or four would be nine or 11, which is what I just said. And if the seven is in the chord, the six would be 13. So if seven is taken up, six is 13. So this is why we don't use extended versions of one, three, five, or seven. For example, we don't use 10th as a chord tone. We just call it three, no matter where it's placed, because those one, three, five, and seven, those are the basic numbers, uh, basic chord tones of a chord. So a 10th interval is a common term, totally. That simply means a compound third distance, meaning that it's specifically the interval of a third plus an octave. But that has nothing to do with if it's a part of a chord tone or not. So I know this is a lot, but again, we just have to go over this stuff. So the interval, here, I'm going to give you a little diagram examples. The interval between one and three in this C add nine chord, they are a tenth apart, a compound third. Same thing, a tenth and a compound third. Um, that's the interval distance that they, that they are. So the one to the three, that's an octave plus a third. It's a compound third, or the, this is the interval of a tenth. But as a chord tone, the three is simply the third of the chord. So we call it three no matter what. Okay, so I hope I'm I hope I'm kind of getting some of those points across uh, by repeating them in different ways. I'll say it one more time. This is the interval of a 10th, but the chord tone is just the third. We don't call it the 10th, right? So the distance is a 10th away or a compound third, but just as a chord tone, it's just the three straight up. Okay, so that was the, that was the main takeaway there but we have a little more to do. So chord extension labeling rules, let's, Let's drive this home. If the three is in a chord, scale degree two from the root equals the extension nine. If the three is in a chord and scale degree two is in the chord off of the root, scale degree two away from the root of the chord, then it's called nine, okay? Same thing, if the three is in a chord, scale degree four away from the root. If the four is in a chord, then it's called 11, okay? If the three is missing, then the extension version of two and four are not used. They are just two and four. If the three is missing, then two and four are just actually the numbers two and four. And if the three is there, those numbers are nine and 11. So I know I've said that now in like three different ways, but that's because I know that it's weird to get used to if we're not familiar with that already. And these are some of the rules that that's why this is demystifying compound intervals and chord extensions. I think it is um, it is mystifying. To be like, what? Why? Why is this chord this you know, this chord label? What? How do we make sense of all this stuff? We just have to get used to some of the nomenclature here. So, um, same rules with seven, same idea with seven, um, seven versus six. If seven is in a chord, then scale degree six. If the six is in the chord, six away from the root, then it's 13, it's not six, okay? And I hope that makes sense why six is 13. Again, if eight is one, then nine is two, um, and 10 is three, and et cetera, et cetera. You count up all the way, six is 13. Four is 11, um, 
5 is 12. No one ever says 12, right? There's not a chord tone 12 because 5 is the compound fifth is a tw is an interval of a 12th. So 13 we're used to though, which just means that it's a 6 as a chord extension or the interval of a 13th. So if the 7 is missing, however, then the extension version of 6 is not used. It's just 6. If the 7 is missing, then 6 is just 6. If the 7 is there, then 6 is 13. Okay, so study this slide more if you need to, listen to it again if you need to, pause it and just kind of soak that in and read it a few times if you need to. We do need to know those rules to understand our chord spelling in the next module and to make all kinds of amazing voicings all over the guitar. Leave a question if you have any, and as always, this will be reviewed and practiced a bunch in the course uh, in the next module. So yeah, there's a lot to learn just to know what we need to know to practice. And then once we know that stuff, the practice gives us everything we need the exercises to do. So there are no exercises for this lesson though, just wanted to get this information across. So if a lot of this was new or confusing, then watch this video again, just to soak it in. Um, even if you just kind of watch it on a faster speed, I like to do that sometimes when I'm reviewing stuff um, or slower speed, if that's helpful too, right? Um, so now we know how to tell if a chord tone should be labeled as an extension or not. That's the takeaway from this. We know now how to tell if a chord tone should it be labeled as an extension or not an extension. Um, we saw some examples of how chords are spelled and how that can translate uh, to the fretboard and you have an amazing foundation now. So the next module is all about learning the correct spelling and naming conventions for every chord type. So this is setting us up for that. Um, that will then will we will then be able to use that to accurately analyze or create any chord type or chord shape on the guitar. So this is getting exciting. We're getting to those exciting results and can't wait to see you in that next module and in that next video. That's it. Hope you enjoyed that. You can click the link in the top of the description to learn more about Chords on Command. The whole curriculum is laid out there. You can check it all out if you're watching this when this video comes out. This week is launch week for the course, so I have a discounted price and a bunch of other bonuses and goodies that you get if you sign up before Friday at midnight. One of those is a live Q&A video call where we get to just hang out and talk guitar in a group session, and that will be Super fun, I'm looking forward to that. And if you're watching this in the future, the bonuses won't be there, but that's okay. The course is still gonna be there and you can sign up if you like. Oh, and I have a 90 day money back guarantee because if you're not happy, I'm not happy. So yeah, I want it to be one of the best guitar theory courses out there. So it's important to me that it's well worth it and just an amazing program. That's it. Maybe I'll see you in one of my paid courses someday, but either way, I will see you next week for another video as usual. And let me know in the comments if any light bulb moments happened for you from this particular theory lesson. Was there anything in that theory lecture that you didn't know before that you found helpful? Let me know in the comments. As always, I love hearing from you and I'm rooting for you and your goals in music, your visions, your dreams. So here's to your progress on the guitar. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.